Uh, what I'd like to do now is take you step by step through individual demand and how we calculate market demand using that. I'm going to give you a very simple explanation and very simple example for this using two people, Mark and Lisa, and their demand for widgets. So very simply, I'm going to first look at the demand schedule for Mark. I'm going to give a price of $5 all the way down to $1 for Mark and see that at each price, Mark's demand will change. So at $5, Mark demands a quantity of two widgets. Right? A widget is just a generic term made up for some random economic piece of output. So it's nothing in particular. So at $5, he's willing to buy two. At $4, he's willing to buy four. $3, he's willing to buy six. $2, he's willing to buy eight. And $1, he's willing to buy 10. Now, if you look at the graph, this represents the data on the left in the demand schedule. So again, on my y-axis, I have price. On my x-axis, I have quantity. And you'll see the data matches up. At a price of $5, you'll see that Mark buys a quantity of two widgets. At a price of $3, you'll see that Mark buys a quantity of six. Now this should be pretty straightforward for you. I just want to make sure as well that you guys see that I've labeled very small here. But uh, let me make that a little bit bigger for you so you can see it. That there's a D. So this should always be labeled clearly so you can see it. And the key thing here is not just the Y and the X axis label, but also the demand curve label. The, t the diagram has been labeled the mar uh, Mark's demand for widgets. And the data corresponds to the graph. Now let's take a look at Lisa facing the same prices and the quantity she demands. So you'll see I've changed over now to the workbook for Lisa or the sheet for Lisa and you'll see at a price of five dollars she will buy a quantity of one widget or what she is willing to buy one widget. At four dollars she's willing to buy two. At three she's willing to buy three and so on. Now that information here should correspond to our graph here and I believe it does. At $5 she's willing to buy one. At $1 she's willing to buy five. Now if you look at them, Mark and Lisa is one after the other, they kind of look the same, but bear in mind the scale is different. Down here we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. For Lisa we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I wanted to do is combine them onto a market diagram and show you how it all comes together. So here we have Mark's demand at a price of five dollars and we have Lisa's demand at a price of five dollars. So if Mark wants two, Lisa wants one, the market demand is three, assuming Lisa and Mark are the only people in this market. And then we do the same thing for a price of four. We see Mark demands a quantity of four at a price of four. Lisa's quantity demanded is two units at a price of four. Therefore, market demand is six. And we follow this all the way through. So we just sum up the individual demand or quantity demanded at that price. We add them all up and we get our market demand. Now when I plot them all together on the same graph, it looks a little bit strange, but let me walk you through what's happened here. This is Lisa's graph here at a price of one, which we can't see because it's missing the label. Lisa is willing to buy five. At a price of two, Lisa is willing to buy four. And then we see Mark here is willing to buy more in general at those same prices. But when we combine them all together, so Lisa's demand curve plus Mark's demand curve, we get the market demand curve, which is this blue line. And to check to see if it's correct, you'll see the data comes up when I drag my mouse over here. It says 15.1. What that means is there's a quantity of 15 purchased at a price of one. So the information here should be correct. Let's check the other side. At a price of three, sorry, at a price of five, the market is willing to purchase three. So the blue curve is the market demand curve. Again, the main thing to draw your attention to here is to understand first how these two schedules combine to make the market demand curve. And then again, using this data to plot on the graph below. If you understand that, you are very clear on what you need to know about individual and market demand curves.